Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you up Magnetic Excursion Update Tuesday, April 15th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. G2 geomagnetic storm conditions have been reached, and we are under a space weather alert for the next 24 hours. Bardabunga also had a small seismic swarm just hours ago. Holy macaroni, keep calm. It's boom time. Rounds of storms to bring a daily dose of severe weather through Easter Sunday. Uh, we're talking multiple rounds of thunderstorms. We'll rattle vast areas of the United States into Easter Sunday, but some packing large hail, high winds, and tornadoes will pose a significant risk to lives and property. Here is the stormy setup Wednesday evening and night. We're talking downpours and hail with locally strong thunderstorms, northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas as the storm moves east towards Arkansas. Thursday afternoon and night, Sioux City, Omaha, Des Moines in the center of the crosshairs for severe thunderstorms with large hail, localized damaging winds to 70 mile per hour gusting and potentially even higher. The severe thunderstorm threat stretches across the country Friday afternoon and night from Texas all the way up to Detroit with hail, isolated tornadoes, localized damaging wind gusts to 75 miles per hour, and the system lingers around here Saturday afternoon and night from Texas all the way up to Kentucky looking pretty plucky. AccuWeather local storm max says gusting to 85 is possible. And a storm sends more than 100 lightning strikes over the Sierra Pass on Tuesday. Holy macaroni. Uh, storms over the Sierra Pass on Tuesday afternoon delivered more than 100 lightning strikes in just a few hours. Hours of powers. The storms, including one near Truckee, stayed on to the west and didn't reach Reno. The lightning strikes were part of the first thunderstorms of 2025 for the region, according to the National Weather Service. And the hail map for Monday, April 14th was epic. 55,000 plus households impacted by one inch or larger hail and 8,267 households impacted by gorilla hail in a region of over 12 square miles. And here is the full forecast. Snow in the Great Lakes, critical fire weather in the southwest and southern plains. Lake effect snow will continue downwind of the lower Great Lakes through Wednesday with accumulations of 4 to 8 inches possible for portions of upstate New York and the Adirondacks. Gusty wind and dry conditions will result in critical fire weather conditions in the southwest and southern plains. Take a look. Uh, almost all of New Mexico in the high wind warning. We'll take a look at the GFS model and you can see that lingering system in the northeast will move offshore in the next day or so as another system drops down through the Pacific Northwest and brings us that severe weather threat all week there in the central U.S. A quick look at the total snowfall shows that, well, Al Gore is still going to be upset in the coming days. Here we've got Tuesday, Wednesday, into Thursday. There's the remaining snow in the Northeast, maybe another six to eight inches as Montana gets hit hard here uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that system moves down, down into the Four Corners region, bringing us much needed moisture for our basins. Good news there. And through the weekend, Friday and Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of next week, Wednesday, Thursday. Looks like next week we could pick up a little bit more snow in the Northeast as well. So buckle up. It's not over. It's spring. Ding, ding. Seismic update. Well, we just had a 6.6 .6 on the Southeast Indian Ridge. No tsunami warnings. This was a, a surface quake and a big one, but no tsunami warnings issued 5.6 in Afghanistan and the activity on the west coast appears to be cooling down as some seismic uptick in Iceland is raising eyebrows and we'll get to that in just a moment let's take a look the Vatna Yokel yes 
And what we are talking about is Bartabunga. Bartabunga had a little seismic flurry getting up above four magnitude earlier today. We're keeping a close eye on that and Bartabunga itself. Now, Bartabunga erupts quite often, uh, but not in any spectacular way since all the way back here in 1477, where it went off at VEI 6. Since then, it's been reducing in activity all the way down to VEI 0. So any eruption from Bartabunga might just be a little blip, and we're waiting for the next one. Worldwide Volcano News for the day, we've got Liwa Tobi to 9,000, Semadu to 15,000, Raventador Volcanic Ash today, Semadu, who knew? Continuous Volcanian activity, and you can see the blast there. Ibu to 7,000 feet, Canleon to 9,000 feet, Liwotolo, an 8,000 foot blast today, Sange to 21,000 feet, sporadic emissions at Raventador, Semadu, a volcanic eruption was reported today, as well as Liwotolo and Dukono to 8,000 feet, and Liwotobi to 8,000 feet, Santa Guito to 14,000 feet, Ibu to 7,000 feet. Spectacular Strombolian activity at Etna, looking delicious. Sungay to 19,000 feet, Ibu to 7,000 feet, Raventador 15,000 foot, Semadu, who knew, now you do 15,000 foot blast there. And wrapping up the list is Dukona with an 8,000 foot puff actually coming on the 16th of April. Yes, it's true. An updated Northern Lights Alert for 17 states after a double filament eruption on the sun. Northern Lights might be visible for 17 U.S. states this week on Tuesday and Wednesday night with aurora displays due to G2 geomagnetic storms from two plasma filaments. And it may be, well, quite spectacular. How do you like them, Auroras? A quick look over at space weather and some of the things going on here. We can see KP5 at Boulder, KP5 at Fredericksburg, estimated planetary K around 6 at all stations. And we are now hovering at about 6 plus KP. It looks at least like one plasma cloud has arrived earlier than expected, which means it's bigger than expected and faster than expected and will bring more geomagnetic storming than expected. The solar wind speed increased initially from 380 to 500 and has increased up to above 600 now. Plasma density was noted as well. Moderate G2 geomagnetic storm warning was issued for the rest of today with strong G3 storm conditions possible in the next 24 hours. Hours of powers, and this is coming from two plasma filaments that erupted off of the sun just the other day, and well, they are headed our way with a direct hit right there, like swimwear. A quick look at telemetry, and we will refresh it to see if there's any updates. You can see a spike up, up here all the way, almost to 900 kilometers per second. Another spike happening a moment ago, near 800 kilometers per second. Density is increasing, and if the BZ pushes further south here, well, we're going to get into G3 geomagnetic storm quite rapidly. So make sure you get out and look up. Let's take a look at the current aurora forecast. And it is looking pretty weak currently. But things will change in the coming hours. Just keep an eye on the sky. A NASA expert explains why no astronaut in history has ever left Earth's atmosphere. Well, if you didn't know, Earth's atmosphere extends far out into space. And hydrogen atoms can be found even on the moon, coming from Earth's atmosphere. And so... Even our moon is within the atmosphere, and that explains why no astronaut has ever been out of the atmosphere. Leah and I will tackle this this weekend on our radio show. Now, tiny details on an animal bone changing what we know about our human ancestors, and it is mind-blowing. The first evidence that hominids butchered animals at a site in Romania, dates back 1.95 million years old. And if you know anything about human history, homo sapiens like us, well, we may go back almost 300,000, but these 
creatures were nothing like us, yet they were still butchering animals two million years ago. All the links will be below. A newly discovered comet called Swan just erupted with, with a bright icy burst, according to idiots called cosmologists. And they are claiming at Live Science that it is a cold volcano. Well, the reality is that what we can see is an increase in luminosity as well as a plasma tail forming. This is electrical discharge. It has nothing to do with their science fiction gobbledygook of icy cryovolcanoes right here. And in fact, they even allude to it. However, it's still unclear whether the icy object is a true cryovolcano. There's nothing icy about this electrically discharging object. In fact, it, it might be plasma hot. Lee and I will break it all down this weekend on the radio show where we cover uh, once again, what an electric comet is and why Comet Swan C2025F2 is exactly that. And more garbage coming from the globalists. They don't want you to grow your own food or be self-sufficient. And now they're warning you from eating eggs from your back garden or any farm that is not a commercial farm. The Dutch are warning not to eat homegrown eggs over fear of PFAS and forever chemicals, which apparently the Dutch didn't get the memo, is in all rainwater worldwide, and therefore all eggs will be equally contaminated with PFAS. Doctors say they found a way to clean the microplastics out of your body, but it's more of a scam for rich idiots like Ozempic. In an interview with Wired, Clarify Clinic's CEO, Yale Cohen, said their London facility bespoke blood filtering service, otherwise known as Aspherces, is generally used for plasma donation, but in this case, they use micro-micron filters to filter the plastic out of your blood. Yeah, it's a scam because most of the microplastics implant themselves into your flesh and stay there forever. It costs $12,000 per session, so rich people are gobbling it up. It's the newest fad, and that's a boom. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We love each and every one of you, and be safe. That is a boom. Click on the link in the first comment for a free gold and silver kit and hedge your bets on the future collapse of our economy. Do -do -do.